here we're going to be scarfing together a couple pieces of 12 foot white ash to make some handrails or gunnels. Um, we'll use the same technique for all the really long pieces of stock like this for the gunnels or handrails as well as the inside chine and the outside chine. This is uh, four quarter rough sawn lumber which is 15 16 thick. We're going to cut a 12 to 1 slope on these two pieces. Um, these two pieces have a little bit of curve to them, which uh, a lot of the wood will have. So you want to make sure when you're lining this up that you put the curves going the same way. And that actually will help you when you go to bend it around the boat, you want to use the natural curve of the wood as much as possible. So we're going to cut these 12 to 1 slopes. Um, if this wood was an inch thick, the 12 to 1 slope would be a foot. Um, since it's 15, 16, it's a little less than a foot, but all we're going to do right now is mark out um, a rough area that we're going to cut out so a uh, foot is good enough. So I've got a foot ruler here. I'm going to mark a foot and a foot on this one. There's a little bit of bad wood here, so I'm marking it in from that. I'm not using that part here. So we want to just mark where we're going to have a slope here. And this one's going to have the same slope. And then we're going to cut out this material and cut out this material. Uh, we're going to rough cut it with the bandsaw and we'll finish cut it with the router jig that's in the plans and get a nice smooth finish and glue them up together. So I like to put little X's on the parts I'm going to cut out just so there's no confusion when I get on the bandsaw. What part I'm... Okay, so now we're going to use the bandsaw to cut, just rough cut the majority of the material off on our 12 to 1 slope uh, and then we'll clean it up with the router jig. So I'm going to cut this real quick. circular saw and you just rough cut it out. Uh, you could use a power planer to rough cut it uh, or you could cut it all off with the router jig if you want. Um, you could also use a table saw but you'd have to build a jig to, to safely do that. So now we've got that rough cut we'll uh, set up the uh, router jig. Okay we have our stock clamped into the uh, scarfing jig. I've got the router set so it's going to take just a minimal amount off on the first pass. I usually do two or three passes get it progressively deeper each time. When you get down to the last pass, when you get when it's going to take it down all the way, it's probably going to tear out the very end of the wood a little bit. If you're using stock that's thicker than your final desired stock, that's no problem because you're going to glue it together, run it through the planer or the table saw, and it's going to cut it down. So if it's chewed up, it doesn't matter.
Okay, so here's the finished product. It's got a nice even slope to it, it's perfectly flat. The straight edge on there, there's no variance at all whatsoever. So that's what we're looking for. We're going to do all the pieces that way and then we'll uh, glue them up. These are the pieces all ready to glue up. Uh, what I've done is I took them and I put them on edge like this, lined up the other one to it, got it fit in exactly how I wanted, made some little pencil lines so I could realign it. Then I sanded the faces with 80 grit just to give it a little bit of tooth for epoxy to bite into. Then I mixed up some T88 and I spread it on there fairly thin and I let it soak in for about an hour. And I checked it after about half an hour to see if there was any dull spots where it had soaked in, added any epoxy needed just to make sure there's plenty of epoxy on there. Uh, epoxy is an amazing adhesive. It's got great gap filling properties, um, but you want to make sure there's plenty of epoxy there. And on porous woods, especially like oak, that's really important. So that's all done. So now I've got some T88 mixed up. It's pretty cold here right now, so what I've done is I have this little box here that I made. I've got a little uh, space heater behind it. And I keep my epoxy in there just to keep it at a nice warm temperature because T88 is pretty thick when it's cold. So I heat it up a little bit, probably 70 degrees. Makes it a little easier to mix up. So I've got some here mixed up. Uh, I'm going to spread it with, this is a piece of a notch scraper. Uh, this happens to be a West System scraper. I really like these, they're easily, easy to get. Um, they work really well, but you can make your own out of a piece of uh, milk jug, just cut little notches in it. The idea is just to use something notch so you get a nice uniform, even layer of epoxy on there. You can kind of control it. If you just try to do it with a flat scraper, it's kind of hard to control exactly how much you have. So it's, you know, nothing too big. You just put it on there, use your notches to get a nice, even amount. And I put it on both pieces. Our pieces ready to glue. They've got the thickened epoxy on there. Turn it on edge. My pencil marks are up. I'm going to clamp this one to the bench. Then I'm going to line up my pencil marks. I'm just going to use a little spring clamp to kind of hold it in place real quick. Then I'm going to clamp this side down too. The reason for that is, is we want one edge to be perfectly even because that's the edge that if we run it through a planer, we'll run that through on the, on the sled part. If you're going to run it through your table saw, then you'll put that against the fence. So you've got one edge that's really nice and smooth to, to get your cuts started with. Clamp this with some C 
C-clamps. I like to use five of them. Um, I put one in the middle first. And just split the difference with the other ones. don't want to clamp these too tightly. Uh, like I said earlier, epoxy is an amazing adhesive with great gap filling properties and it doesn't require any clamping pressure at all. If two pieces are touching and there's epoxy in there, the joint's going to be as strong as epoxy can possibly make it. The only time epoxy ever fails is if the joint is starved. So you Obviously, you don't want to squeeze all of the epoxy out. So you use just enough clamping pressure to hold everything in place. And voila, you'll have a perfect, strong joint. After it's glued, I like to set it like this. So there's no chance that the epoxy, because you're going to have some squeeze out. You can probably see here there's epoxy oozing out. Certainly on that side you can see it. Um, anyways, if you set it on edge, I always wonder, you know, is all the epoxy going to drip out? So I keep it like this, so you're going to have the natural squeeze out, but the majority of the epoxy is going to stay inside.